Just a bloke in a bar. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Bloke in a Bar, brought to you by the best beer in the land, dare I say, in the universe. And I'm willing to put my reputation on the line for that. So any other beer owner that wants to challenge me, I'm willing to have a debate with you, maybe even enter fisticuffs. No, I, je- I jest, I jest. I am here with the um, the great Jerome Luai, mate. How have you been after what a finish to the season? Yeah, I've been really good, eh? Yeah. Um, just trying to settle back into, I guess, normal life and, mm. and parenthood now. I've got one on the way, so i yep. um, trying to suss that out and she's on her way soon. So, yeah, uh, still filling the highs with the GF and that. Get goosebumps every time. And, yeah, Does sort it feel of like- real? Can't explain it, man. Like yeah. I watched the I watched the property like about two weeks ago. Yeah. Um. And yeah, just get goosebumps in, in mm. certain moments and yeah, just sort of remembering every moment. And it's totally different from last year. Yeah. Last year was just a blur, but this year just felt a bit slowed down. Yeah. You know what I mean, but yeah, remember everything. Bruh, it's like it's you know to win a GF, it, it it happens like it's obviously you're so not lucky. You've worked hard, but you were in two grand finals in a row. But still, like, as you guys learned last year, you, everything can go right. And if only one game where you turn up and it does it, that can be everything, you know? So to win a grand final, I, I'm sure you, out of most of the boys, appreciate it even more after losing that grand final. Yeah, definitely. And just how different the feeling was or was after the um, both games. But, yeah. yeah, just so happy and sort of elated and just how surreal it was in that moment when the, mm. the bell rang. Yeah, just... I think it was Nath or Alberto yeah. just grabbed him and started screaming. <sighs> so top good, of my man. lungs, man. So yeah, it was so crazy. Good. Do you think what what was did you in the lead up to this one? Were you did um, Ivan sit all the boys down and say like this is what we learned from last time? Because I remember the last grand final, and this could be wrong, but fuck, you were so pumped when you ran out, like you were jumping about, and I was like, fuck, the boys are on here. Um, was that something that you learned? Maybe let's let's take a step back keep calm or was you know was there ever a conversation of changing the way you approached it not really yep. just learning from our mistakes yep. and okay. we had to start well that was yep. the main thing and yep. that's what i'm pretty sure we all learned and mm. stay in the moment as well if something yep. does go wrong um just stay present there's yep. plenty of time on the clock and stuff like that because mm. i think the previous year we sort of stuffed up and then sort of try to rush things yeah um which was wasn't wasn't how we do sort of things so yeah yeah just stay calm and and stay a bit more relaxed but yeah that's one thing you did do is like in the game against Rabbitohs, both teams were struggling to score points, but mm. you just can every set it was like a new set for you guys. That's what it looked like anyway, watching on TV. It looked like every set you had this like renewed vigor as if it was your first and last set. Um, what do you remember from the game? What's something that sticks out? Everything, man. I think, yeah, just how um, aggressive we were in D yeah, um, and how we approached that all year, I think. Mm. Um, Sarah's a mad, mad defensive coach, man. So yep. he does a lot for us mm. in terms of like tape and film and that sort of thing. But yeah, from the game, just probably um, that first half, um, sort of getting a, a bit frustrated because we couldn't score points. Or I was, I was just thinking to myself, um, man, we've, we've had a lot of ball this first half. So mm. um, when, when are the points going to come, sort of thing? But yeah. I think that was what we learnt: is stay present in the moment mm. um, and trust our footy. So yeah. Yep. That was crazy, mate. It was, uh, mate, it just, yeah, it was wild. Okay, so when, when it, throughout this year, was there a different feeling towards last year? Like, did you feel, you know, you know, leading into the grand final, did it feel any different, or it felt relatively the same? Or I think, yeah, definitely leading into the grand final, um, we had so many tough games. Yeah, a lot more closer games That's to true. last year. Yeah, so we sort of worked our way through. Winning in, in different situations, tougher mm. situations, um, and a lot more closer games than, than what we had previous years. So I think we we were conditioned, um, in a sense, like mentally and, yep. and physically as well, because the boys are bruised, man. Like back into the year, <sighs> Bruh. I don't know how some of them even, even, even got onto the park. So that's what just was the conversation like when you had so many injuries? It was it like, boys, we just got to find a way here. Like mm. we just just whoever can get on the park, get on the park. because there was a period there like Edwards had a broken foot. Yeah, um, was it? Liam Martin was injured as well, I think. Like, do you know what I mean? You had, it, obviously, um, To'o. Mm. He was, yeah, he was busted. Um, he'd been busted for a lot of the year, hasn't he? Yeah, even Moss, um, he was one. <coughs> like, he was battling calf injuries as well. So, mm. the discussion was pretty much, F your body. Um, if your mind can think it, your body will do it sort of thing. Yeah. And okay. that was pretty much, yeah. That was between the group as well, mm. sort of thing. That was led by a few of the leaders. So, Mate. yeah, man. 
What a win. What a win. <laughs> um, okay, so what about the celebrations after? Yeah, the, the siren goes. Yeah. You win the grand final and, you know, the, for everything you'd worked for last year comes true this year. You know, it took an extra year, but you've got the job done. What, what was it feeling like? Crazy, man. Like, I can't even explain it to people. I've been asked so many times. Yeah. It's just something that you sort of just feel mm. rather than trying to explain it or even put into words because yeah. I actually can't. Bro. 100%. You know, um, just working all your life for it and, yep. and watching on TV every year, just, I guess, wishing to be in, in those guys' in those go, uh, in those guys' shoes. Yep. But, yeah, nah, still pinch myself sort of mm. thing and, and brought the ring in as well, so. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Just a look, man. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, man. That's the closest I'll ever get to on that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I won't disrespect it by putting it on, but... <laughs> Bro, that's so hectic, man. But yeah, just looking at that just sort of, yeah, blows my mind sort of thing. That's amazing, <laughs> bro. That is so good to see, man. It's so good to see. I, I don't, this is the first time I've ever seen one in real life. <laughs> have you ever seen one before? Uh, yeah, I have. That's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks, brother. That's incredible, bro. Fuck, that's cool. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so what's the feeling like? Okay, so you get back in the change room. Yeah. And obviously you do the team song. Everyone's pumped. Was there a, what was, did things quieten for a moment where you could talk to each other? Or if, as soon as you won the grand final, everything since then has just been this big blur? Yeah, massive blur. Yeah. Yeah, you sort of don't, re I sort of, I remember everything in the game, but mm. after, the, in, in the game, after the game in the shed, yeah, you sort of, that was the, the blur yeah. of the night because everyone would just look at each other and then yeah. just go, yeah, <laughs> spray each other with the yeah. toys, news cans we had in our hand. Yeah. And then, yeah, just our, our partners and that came in as well and just, mm. The music was pumping and yep. everyone was just jumping everywhere for about 45 minutes or something Mate, straight. It's so, so good. I'm so happy for you boys, honestly. Like, I, I really am, really am. Okay, take us back to a young fella. Um, you're obviously of Samoan descent. Mm -hmm. So it's half Samoan, half Māori? Yeah, my mum's half Māori. Yep. She's half English as well. So okay. her dad was um, from from England. Or Yeah, I don't really know her backstory, but yep. okay. <clears throat> yeah, that's what she is. And okay. And so your father is Samoan? Yep. Okay. And um, you're, but you're born in Sydney? Yep. Um, born in the area? Yeah. Whereabouts in the area? Nepean, man. Nepean? So Nepean, Penrith. That's pretty much the local hospital in Penrith. So okay. I've never left, bro. Really? Never <laughs> left, man. <laughs> Mate, you can't, take a, you can't take a boy out of the area. <laughs> um, now, so growing up in that area, what was it always rugby league for you? Was it something that you just did for fun to be with your mates? Was it something that you excelled at? You know what I mean? Was yeah. it, cause some kids when they're younger, that's their goal from like day dot. Yeah. You know? Nah, that wasn't me. I started off playing soccer when yep. I was six. Okay. I was a energetic kid, just yep. fast, toey, not yep. real big. Um, like most Polynesian boys are mm. when they're young and that. So yeah, dad put me in soccer for about three years. Yeah. Um, I remember having a trial when I was playing soccer, chucked me in a troll, West Tigers, Hebo, bro, I got pumped, absolutely pumped. So as in, you, so you were playing soccer, but then <laughs> yeah. you just randomly trialed for rugby league. Yeah, so I had a mate, an Aboriginal boy, um, he played footy and he was a gun, bro, yeah. back in primary. I, don't, I, don't, I was probably seven or something like that. Yeah. And um, his mum just told me to come down and have a run. <laughs> bro, got flogged, man. <laughs> got pumped and then just, yeah, run it back to soccer for about another year or two. Yeah. And then, yeah, eventually made my way. Um, Apparently I had good hands and yeah, and then yeah, made a Div One team, Mitchenberry Jets, mm. and then yeah, I was on the wing. How old were you being when you made the Div One side? Yeah, I was nine, so my first yeah. year. I think I had like a year break and just played soccer for yeah. another year, and then yeah, went and trialed the pretty gun gun side. Yeah, and then um, yeah, was lucky enough to find a, a spot on the wing because I was pretty quick. Yeah, um, when I was younger, so mm. that's probably why they chucked me there. Right, <laughs> you know what's funny is like that experience you had. <coughs> like trying rugby league for the first time. I played soccer till I was 17. Yeah. And I'd like mucked around as a kid. Like as you, like, I, honestly, I played more badminton than rugby league growing up. <laughs> like seriously, I played barely any games. But so I went away to school with my, uh, went away to a carnival to play rugby league with my school, but it was only because I wanted time off school. Yeah. And I'd, I was already like fully into soccer. Like that was my career path. Yeah. But the first session that I rocked up and end up getting signed with the Broncos reserves guy, blah, blah, blah. But the first session I rocked up to actually do my first rugby league training. Yeah. I've never trained for it before. Um, it was the Clydesdales and you know the diamonds. Yeah. And you know, you just, just hit like you just, 
let's let's do ten hits. You hit me, I hit you in the diamond. Is that the pads? Yeah, yeah the pads. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, diamond pads that just go around there and wrap around your back. <laughs> yeah, but I did like three tackles. Had to stop because I had no, I had nothing there. <laughs> Literally nothing there, bro. And so, being a soccer player, you never use that part of your 100%. body ever. Yeah, I had to stop because I was cramping up. And How old are you? Out. Seventeen. 17. Oh, true. Yeah, so oh, I had to right. sit, sit out like sit out of the drill yeah. until we started just running. Yeah. And I was like you, I was just quick yeah. and that like in soccer, but I just sit out of the tackling warm-up drill because I literally was cramping because I had nothing there. I'd never tackled like that before. That's crazy. Even in the games where I got scattered by the Broncos, uh, that was me like grab tackling at full I was a fullback. Yeah. I didn't know how to pass or anything. I could just run, but I was never putting put it this way, the, the week before I rocked up to that session, yeah. I went and got my sprint coach. And he made me get my brother and he was trying to teach me how to tackle. The sprint coach? Yeah. So he was getting my brother to run at me, who was also a soccer player. Yeah. And I was trying to tackle, like, he was like, no, no, you need to hit with here. And I was like, being all unco, like, <laughs> doing that and shit. So I, I feel your pain to it. That's an, crazy. I feel your seven-year-old pain. 100%. As a 17-year-old man. <laughs> um, so you make the div one side. Did you fall in love with the game then? Or would you, were you still kind of like leaning towards soccer as something you enjoyed to do? Or mm. what, what was the process there? I probably just loved the boys, to yeah. be honest. And, and that's what sort of made me love the game even more. Yeah. Um, you know, my friends back in that side are still my best mates now. So mm. that's probably why um, I sort of grown that love for the game. Mm. was probably the mateship. Yeah. Um, but I moved away from those boys uh, when I sort of made like a, a rep school footy side. Yeah. And um, I made it for halfback. Okay. Yeah, so that was a, a pretty big change up. Um, but I couldn't play halfback in that team because there was already done halfback there. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so I moved away from my best mates and then sort of went to um, our rival team, like mm. St. Mary's. Yeah. Um, and that's probably where I actually started, like, really yep. knuckling down on my footy and, and sort of when you of say that. moved away, do you just mean you moved teams? Yeah, moved okay. teams, yeah. <clears throat> okay. But that was pretty tough because they're my best mates there. But 100%. My dad wanted me to play in, in sort of the, the position um i wanted to be playing and so mm. yeah that was pretty crazy oh so so your dad could see look my, my son's pretty good at this i want to give him a good opportunity yeah and there's a good half in this current team yeah. so we need to find him another team that's going to allow him to play yeah because i made like the state primary schools like the train on squad so it was pretty big yeah um and that was probably my first rep side that i pro proper made for footy yeah um and then my dad sort of just said yeah um you need to play that position but okay. i couldn't play it at, uh, within that team i was in so yeah yeah moved to saints and when I moved there, that was probably where the competitive, competitiveness sort of grew. Yep. Because, um, uh, yeah, we're probably the rival teams, me was, and my best mates. So. I was going to say, what was it like that when you first played your, your good mates? Yeah, it was scary, man. <laughs> I, was, I was sweating, bro. It was like a grand final for me. Yep. Just knowing my boys were on that side. And yep. they, they told me they were feeling the same way. So yep. um, they'll probably watch this. Who and won? Say, um, yeah, that was, we're probably the best two teams. I yep. think they won the first year. Um, that I moved to that team, but every other year I sort of got it up. On Let's them go, yeah. baby. Uh -huh. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, yeah. The, you were clearly the star. Cliche, <laughs> you know what? We regretted. They regretted losing you the, the seven. <laughs> okay, so so at this point, um, was it was there? So you would have been what, like 10, 11, 12 at that point? Yeah, 12, 13. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, when did Penrith start to become, oh, you know, this kid can play? Yeah, it was probably around that, that time. Yep when the development squads started to get picked and stuff like that. So yep. we just have like one big training day or they got all the sort of guns together. Yep. Um, and yeah, probably then under 13s. Under 13s, okay. So they kind of <coughs> identified you. Did they give you a contract, a, a development deal or was that later on? I think there was a or something like that um, where I sort of got a manager around that time, 14 yep. as well. So mm. there might've been like, they helped me out with my fees or something like that. Yep. Um, when I stepped into high school, but I wasn't like any money or anything yeah. like that. So yeah. yeah, it was just a helping hand sort of thing. And so you continue, did you um, make rep sides, you know, 14, 15, 16, were you making the rep sides? Harold Mats was probably um, the first big one. Okay. Um, there was a, like a, a MCS team yep. um, in school and that, but yeah, I was pretty small when, mm. I, when I hit 13, probably to year nine. Yeah, I was tiny, bro. Really? So I didn't really have a growth. Because you were like 6'2 now, 6'1? Yeah, about 6'1, six, six yep. yeah. Do you say six on a good day? No, no. Six, <laughs> six one on a good day. <laughs> um, okay, so you um you yeah you, you begin progressing. Is it two thousand and what? Do you reckon two thousand fourteen when you get offered your first kind of train deal with the NYC Penrith side? Yeah, about then. Yeah, I think so. Eighteen or maybe even nineteen. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you would have been. So okay. So sorry. No, it was eighteen. Yeah, because that's when I played. 
20s and that, so yeah, yep. maybe when I was 17. Okay, yeah, yeah, so 17, Panthers come to you and say, we want you to play for our 20 side. Yeah. And that 20 side has, you know, obviously had like um, Cleary in it, mm. you know, all the boys, oh, not all the boys, but a lot of the boys that are playing NRL now. Yeah. Um, what was that feeling like getting, you know, fully picked up by Penrith and put into that 20 system? Yeah, that was mad. That was yep. probably, yeah, like the sort of um, the start to like the pro sort of training and that. Because yeah. um, I was still in school and I was finishing my SU boy year when I done like a pre-season with the 20s boys. Yeah. Um, so I think there was like three of us out of that SG ball squad that one like sort of got chosen to go train with the, the 20 boys. That was Nath, yep. uh, me and uh, Reed Izzard as well. He was okay. in and amongst the group. So um, yeah, back end of our, or back end of the 20s year after the SG ball season, um, sort of got a few games there with the boys and then um, played pretty good actually. And yep. then sort of just um, cemented a side on that side. And then we won it that year, so. Oh, so you won it the first year in 20s? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so we, we made our yeah. way in back into the year mm. and just, yeah, found a, a spot in that side. Lucky, oh, man. Yeah. Cause, well, yeah. So were you playing six with Nath seven? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Nath made that transition earlier than, than okay. we did. Yep. So, yeah, he debuted like a couple of weeks earlier. Okay, then, okay. Yeah. Um, so you were you seven then and he, and someone else six or were you six that year? Um, Time was in the halves yep. as well. So I played um, a few games when, when Nath... Um, I think he went to school, boys. That yeah. was for the GF anyway. Okay. But, yeah, me and Nath were the six and seven. Yeah, okay. Uh, do you remember winning that, that grand final under 20s? Hell yeah. Frick yeah. Um, that was, that was a, mad, a mad game too. That was another, probably one of um, oh, my best years, like, yeah. from memory. Yeah. Just having the boys there as well. And, and Ciro was the coach yep. as well. So, um, that was a pretty tough game. I think Turbo was in that side. No way. Yeah, Nico was, Hines as well would have been. Nico Hines was there. Yeah. Um, but Turbo was killing it, bro. Like oh, still yeah. scoring four tries a game. He's that. a joke. He's a joke. But yeah, he was having a laugh. Um, <laughs> so, so you're playing Manly in the grand final. Do you remember anything from that game specifically at all? Um, I scored a pretty mad try. Yeah, let's um, go. Let's yeah. go. And then done like a celebration, the ninja thing. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I remember. Is that where it started? Yeah, I think so. I've always watched anime. I've okay. been a mad anime lover since young. So yep. yeah. I've, I've loved my cartoons. Yep. Um, just is stuck with it. I still watch it. So yeah. I feel like a bit of a, a egg sometimes when Mrs. comes into the lounge and I'm watching cartoons. Still, right. So. It's, um, <laughs> it's just it's just a new generation. Yeah. Like I think, um, yeah, it's just a new generation. Yeah, really. That's probably my Netflix. Like, yep. yeah. My anime. Isn't there like um, streaming platforms just for anime? Yeah. It's called Crunchyroll. Crunchyroll. <laughs> like, yeah. I'll pay for it in that a month. Yeah. So my Mrs. got the Netflix and then. And I'll you got that. Crunchy What's your number one uh, anime that you like? Oh, between Naruto and, and Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, okay. that's probably my top two easily. Really? Yeah. So Naruto is big, but Dragon is Naruto bigger over in like Japan in that, mm. and Dragon Ball Z is big bigger worldwide, or yeah. is Dragon Ball Z just bigger? Period. Probably, uh, it's probably the same. It just yeah. depends what you prefer more. Yeah, I think okay. the older older dudes would probably like Dragon Ball Z more because that was probably the era. Yeah, okay. Where the sort of the newer kids probably like Naruto more. Oh, really? Yeah. Fucking hell. Um, how do you when you watch like anime? There's a thing called power creep. Yeah. And so, do you know what that is? No. Nah. So, like in a story, it's it's a storytelling mechanism in the sense that when how do you tell a story when you've already told the most powerful story ever yeah you know, for example like worlds have collided universes have exploded yeah where do you go after that yeah how does dragon ball z handle that because they're always like fucking everyone's you know he's the greatest strongest guy in the world mm. and then someone else is like no actually he is and it's just like one after <laughs> you know what i mean yeah it's pretty uh, pretty repetitive yeah like there's always someone that new and comes up and steps yep. up and then challenges the strongest guy yeah but it's just i think always that <laughs> barrier of like the strongest dude Finding another way, yep. like it's just mad motivational for me yep. anyway, and I sort of just put it into terms with like my actual life. Yeah, it might be pretty weird, but yeah, no, it gives 100%. me mad motivation, man. It's uh, it, art, art, regardless of what it is, always has uh, deeper principles and stories that you can take out of that yeah. and apply to life. Like you know, back in the day, it would have been Greek mythology yeah. that you can actually, you know, Icarus flying too f close to the sun. Mm. That's a story yeah. that is about you know getting too caught up in your ego, getting too caught, in the, you know, um, caught in the lights. Um, and anime is just a new form of telling that, a new yeah. form of telling these deeper um, stories. So, hey, I don't watch anime, but I respect that shit. 
Thanks, my guy. <laughs> man, I don't, you know what I always told myself? I don't want to be an old hater. Yeah, fair enough. If I fucking ever, <laughs> like, if I ever find myself being an old hater, yeah. I just don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. Because, like, I just don't get that when, even, like, for example, like, mumble rap and that. Yeah. It's it's not as good as what I like, but I respect it. I yeah. get it. Yeah, you know? I get it. Okay, that's the new wave. I'll get on that wave, baby. I'm cool with that shit. Yes, sir. Oh, <laughs> but man. I never want to be a hater, an old hater. Like I just don't get that when people like anything that new comes along, they're like, oh, that's shit. And you're like, yeah, but if a lot of young people like it, clearly there's something in it yeah. that is cool. Yeah. Like if a lot of people like it, there's something going on there that's cool that you may not understand. That's mad. Um, okay, so so yeah, so you win the you win the grand final. When did they start saying we want you to come train in first grade? Um, it was pretty much after that year. Yeah, um, yeah. I had a preseason. Sorry, that following year I had a preseason with Cup. Yep. Because um, that was probably my first time with the big boys. Yeah. So that following year I had a yeah a mad year with Cup and we won that year. You won um, Cup that in year. Reserve grade the, the following year. So you won twenties and then you won New South Wales Cup. Fudge, I think I got it wrong. <clears throat> no, actually. No, 20s, the following year, yep. um, I got injured and they lost that GF. Did you hear about it? I think no. they were like 30 nil up. What? Walk us through that. Um, yeah, I was injured, but um, I think they were versing the Roosters in under 20s mm. and at half time. Yeah, it might have been like 24 nil or something like that. And the boys are up it. and they lost, bro. <laughs> oh, fuck. So, yeah, the Roosters had a pretty, con- uh, pretty gun side as well. They yep. had like Victor Radley, um, Manu. Yeah. Tuvasa Shek was there as well. So, oh, my God. Yeah. What a t- team. Tupanua, I think, as well. But Holy yeah, shit. That was a good comeback, man. Yeah. Probably one for the books. Wow. So, yeah. Don't really talk about that one. <laughs> <laughs> so you won 20s, then you were injured, you lost the grand final 20s, but then the next year is when you won Cup. Yeah, then, okay. then we won Cup that year. Okay. So um, that year was when I, I started to train first grade. Okay. But the previous year was when I was training with Cup. Okay. And then, yeah, um, had a good year with Cup and then was 18th man a few times for grade yeah. when we did win Cup. But yeah, that was pretty mad, like just experiencing um, a win with the 20s boys and then a yep. win know with the, the reserve grade team so we had a pretty big side with yep. that reserve grade, grade side as well so yeah we had like kicks Marcus Suvo Moss was playing in that team as well so wow. we had some guns in that side man. wow yeah um do you remember your first or one of your first sessions with first grade where you're going like this is intense like this is another level yeah and no, I was yeah not really like I just enjoyed myself man yeah like every chance that I got um I'm, I'm a bit cheeky as well so I was yep. probably having a bit of a laugh with the boys. Yep. Um, whenever I got the chance to go up there and, and train with them, so yep. so you more embraced it rather than because like my generation and it might still be similar with people coming through this generation. But like when we when I came through, I was always like, "Fuck, I don't want to disrespect no one. I don't want to say nothing." Mm. It might be different now. Yeah. Was it more you were coming in and so you know what? I'm just happy to be here. Yeah, definitely. I've always been like that. Just yep. been grateful um, mm. for everything that I've gotten. Yeah. But yeah, I didn't really have that mentality of sort of shying away from that sort of thing because, yeah, I've always wanted to be there. And mm. I knew some of the boys there anyway, like yeah. T-May and, and Nathan, some of the boys that were already there. So yep. that definitely made me feel more lo- a lot mm. more comfortable and just be myself. And at what point when you were training with the first grade squad, did you start to feel like, oh, I might be it? Because when you're training in that first grade squad, where, you know, you can start to get a feeling like, they're, oh, this, they're kind of like letting me you know, fill in for Nath when he's injured. Yeah. Whereas like when you're further off from your debut, they'll let someone else like fill in that position. Yeah. When did it start become a reality for you where you were going, I think they're looking at me to make my debut soon. Yeah, it was when I was started to be like 18th man a lot. Yeah, um, okay. And that was that cup year. But I was training for like fullback, wing, centre, wherever. Mm. It was never really the halves. So yeah, yeah, I was like a bit worried, like um, are they looking at me to, you know, jump in that spot or... Yeah. Are they looking at me elsewhere? Because mm. yeah, I was doing a lot of work there at fullback. Yep. Um, well, that's, you know, I want to say something. A while ago, I was like, Jerome plays sometimes like a fullback. Like yeah. he, he, he reminds me of like a, a really good fullback. And someone in the comments section was like, he doesn't play nothing like a fullback. <laughs> what the fuck? I was like, bruh, I'm pretty sure he debuted. You bet debuted a fullback, didn't you? Uh, debuted in the halves. In the halves? Yeah, oh, 14, like I came off the bench. Oh, you came off the bench? Yeah, yeah. But that you spent some time training at fullback. Yeah, heaps of time. And yep. then I think my third game, um, was Broncos 2018. Yeah. Um, that was that was the game I played at fullback. Okay. Right? And I was pretty skinny as well. Like when I first came into grade, I was tiny. Yeah. And that's probably why I didn't make that transition. Yeah. Um, like as early as like Nate did and that because yeah. I, was, I was pretty skinny. Do you feel well, that so. like training at fullback in other positions actually helped your half play? You know, it's just sometimes when you play other positions, it gives you a good insight into 
if you're playing halves, mm. knowing where they're going to be, what mm. they like, what helps them kind of thing? Yeah, for sure. Like I've played, you know, even hooker in that, mm. um, I think even my first year of grade, yep. where I was playing off the bench and just playing at hooker or even, you know, in, in lock somewhere. So yep. playing different positions definitely helps mm. 100%, man. Um, and so you make your debut round 10 against the Knights. Yeah. Play 26 minutes off the interchange bench. What do you, do you remember getting the news that you're going to make your debut? Yeah, I was at like a, um, a school event. Because yeah. I used to do like teachers' aid and stuff, so mm. I was running like a, a Panthers Day where all the primary schools and that um, come together. But yeah, Hook gave me a call. Hook was the coach at the time, so yeah. Hook gave me a call and told me to um, come over and have a meeting. And I yeah. left that that day straight away. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, walked into the into the room and there was like a whiteboard, and you sort of have the plays there mm. in your positions. And then he just told me to have a look at that, <laughs> and I was looking, but I didn't see my name on the starting <laughs> side. It was like on. <laughs> Over in the corner somewhere <laughs> yep. um, with the boys on the bench. So, yeah, he pretty much just said, look at the board and eventually found my name and then just <laughs> yeah, gave him a massive hug. Yep. And so that was that feeling like when you, you realised, like, wow. Because because a week before you were named in the squad and you... you yeah, <laughs> that was crazy. Right? That was a crazy story. Um, yeah, you sort of named me but said, like, not to say anything. Yeah. Um, because Wade Egan's probably going to play anyway, so... Bro, I was gutted, man, because, you know, I've got family members, like, messaging me yeah, saying, um, you know, good luck, mm. um, have a great game. You've yep. been waiting so long for this moment, and I didn't even reply to, to all of them. So, yeah, that was a pretty tough week, but, yep. no, nah, pretty happy it changed pretty quickly. Mate, um, your debut, it's always, yeah, there's nothing better. So do you remember what the feeling like was in the changing room? Did, did one of the boys pull you aside, give you some advice or anything like that? Yeah, um, Jimmy was there at the time. Oh, the great yeah. Jimmy Maloney. So he's definitely always got a few words for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I just remember Jimmy being there. Um, Ciro was there as well. He's always been a mad mentor for me. So probably those two guys just, just um, giving me their best wishes and, yep. and congratulations was um, something that I always remember. The feeling like when you're walking around, you're like, holy shit, this is a first grade. Like, yeah. This is, this is a first grade. It's, there's something different about it, you know? 100%. And it was different to what it was now. Like, we're loud now in the sheds and that. Yeah. But back then, bro, it was quiet as yeah, with yeah. hook around as well. Yeah. Um, no music? None, bro. <laughs> you couldn't even speak to the boys sometimes. So, yeah, you're just scared to just tread on a piece of glass or something like that. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah, it was quiet as a lot a lot different to what it is now. It's weird, like, different um, locker room vibes. For example, when I was at the Broncos, very quiet, very serious. Yeah. Went to the Bronco, uh, Warriors... A bit louder, like we would run out to drums and that. Mm. Um, but now I think not a lot, but there are quite a few teams that similar to what you guys now do is like a lot of energy, a lot of music. Yep. Um, so so anyway, you make your debut. Do you, would you when you ran on the field? Is there anything that you remember from the debut? Yeah, I was. I tried to do like three tackles, four tackles in a row, <laughs> and then try to get the ball in my hands real yeah, quick and yeah. i was effed bro like first 10 minutes <laughs> yeah i was effed bro. so i was like yeah just settle down a bit yeah and then yeah just get into the game mate yeah i swear every debutant has that <laughs> problem they go on and they just go crazy <laughs> like i don't think i'm gonna make this i'm yeah. gonna have to put my hand up for a spell yeah lucky i only played 26 minutes yeah yeah i was going hundies <laughs> <laughs> um do you remember like one of your first tackles and realizing oh this actually isn't as crazy as I might have made out it to be, they're not as because I had this belief before I played in oh, they're gonna be like so strong and mm. it's gonna be so fast. But then you get in the rhythm, you're like, oh actually I can be here, I can hang with these boys. Yeah, I think watching from the bench as well um helped me out a bit. Yeah. Because yeah. Um our cup team was mostly out there as well that night. Oh, so okay. um I sort of thought to myself, you know, if, if they can sort of do it, I should be all right, sort of yeah. thing. So yeah, um, I think Caelan Ponga was, was, that's when he was like killing it then too. Oh, so, really? Yeah, I sort of just, yeah, wanted to get out there and, and try to get him sort of thing. You know? <laughs> yeah, 100%, 100. Um, okay, so you make your debut in round 10 and do you come back in in round 17 or do you keep stay in the team for the rest <coughs> of the year? Yeah, my second game was then round 17. Round 17. So um, went back and then and played cup for a bit and just yep. tried to work my way up, up into the great spot. And so that second time that you played, um, 36-4 win, and you had two tries and a couple of try assists. Was, was that, because that, that would have been your first experience dealing with, you know, a bit of media and people mm. pumping you up. Yeah. What was that feeling like? Yeah, that game, man, that was probably one of the best games I've played to this date. So yeah. um, I remember the next day I had like a netball carnival and then everyone sort of knew my name. Sort yeah, of thing, yeah. You know? So that was pretty, pretty cool in a sense. But, um, you know, my mum's been good with just keeping me grounded and humble yeah. and that sort of thing. But... It was, it was different, like, going from, you know, like a reserve grade player to then everyone sort of 
knowing your name and that it was, yeah. it was pretty crazy it's uh yeah it's a weird feeling it's a yeah. weird feeling like at 24 hours ago you were just like just chilling doing your job and then 24 hours later you can walk down the street and there's people that like actually like love you and want yeah. to talk to you and yeah. take photos and that um okay so the next year 2019 rolls around and what's interesting about your career is like you know you've you've come so far in this last kind of 24 months but you know it took you a while to really to earn that spot yeah for sure. um did you always know like was pen uh penrith always saying to you you know you're next in line once jimmy moves on we've got a spot for you here or were they always like look you're just gonna have to work your ass off and if you get a spot you get because there's a period where you, where when i was watching i was thinking oh maybe he might end up as a 14 yeah because you were playing that role quite regularly yeah was that something that you were concerned about or you know was that a feeling that you had or yeah it was tough at times um mm. bit of un uncertainty there as well yeah um, what could happen sort of thing but um i sort of signed another deal before gus left um and that was like after that year that yeah. i had um and played a few good games uh, and yeah he just said learn as much as you can off someone like Jimmy yep. um, because he was pretty much the sixth there at the time. So mm. learn as much as you can and, and build your body as well because I was skinny yep. as bro. So that was pretty much the, inf the, like, the sort of info they gave me, just build your body and, and learn yep. as much as you can. But um, when I've came in in that year and I was sort of playing that utility role, um, yeah, like he pretty much just gave me the same info, learn as much as you can with Jimmy. Yep. What do you reckon, what was the most you learned off a guy like Jimmy? Man, just his um, ability to, to brush things, like if things didn't go his way. Or yeah. if you didn't have a good game, bounce back straight away on the Monday and, and be the talk of the town. And that's yeah. something um, that's hard to do, you know, if you that play a bad game. so and hard. Your confidence is down to your feet just yep. to get back and, and be that leader your team needs you to be. So yep. that's definitely something um, that stands out for me. And so 2019, um, you also represent Samoa um, playing hooker and they win over PNG. What was the um, feeling like to be able to represent, you know, your father's heritage? Yeah, awesome. Um, Massive achievement for me and my family as well yep. because uh, we're pretty proud to be someone and mm. always grew up in like a Samoan church and yep. I had a lot to do with my grandparents as well. Mm. Um, stayed at the house like three times a week because my parents both worked like during primary school and that. Okay. So um, yeah, Samoan is, Samoa is a big part of my life and, and yep. how I grew up and that. So it was a big achievement for me. And do you remember anything like putting on the the jersey, going wow, like this is this is it? This yeah, is it. I actually um, was in the World Cup team. Back when I, before I even debuted, debuted. for okay. NRL, so um, I think that was 2017 is when yeah, I was sorry, part yep. of their, their World yep. Cup team. So that was the first experience I had. You're the only Samoan Samo squad player without any NRL experience. Yeah, man. And I was so scared, like, just to be in that environment with NRL players because yep. I, I hadn't played an NRL game before. So yep. <laughs> to meet the boys, first and foremost, was like, man, that was that was buzzy for me. Yeah. Um, and will they even accept me to, to play next to, next to them? Because... Yep. I hadn't even played in an NRL game yet, so yep. that was a massive hurdle for me. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of people don't realise how daunting that is because yeah. when you're a reserve grade player, it's you almost feel like you haven't earned the right sometimes to be there. Hundred percent. And you've got to you do everything you can to show them. No, no, I, I can do it. Just give me a, give me a shot. Yeah. Um, was there anyone you met in that that camp that really that was like, wow, that's such and such, or that gave you some really good advice, or uh, just all of the boys, man? That was a great time. Yeah. Um, we had a great tour as well. Got to go back to Samoa. Yep. Um, probably Joseph Paulo was the guy who took me on his wing. Yep. Um, I think he's over in England now. Mm. Oh, he might have just come back, but he was a mad influence for me. And he was mm. my roomie too. So he was like the older guy looking after the young kids sort of thing. Yeah. But yeah, really grateful for him. And um, then, so in that World Cup, how did you go in that World Cup? <laughs> we, oh, we played pretty crap, eh? <laughs> that was probably the worst one Samoa's ever, ever <coughs> or, like performed in. Yep. So yeah, that was pretty um, yeah hard to take as well. Like, yeah. Not not played NRL, but then not really perform well, mm. um, you know, with a team that was supposed to go well on paper, sort of thing. Yeah, but yeah, that was pretty hard. Um, is it so something that like when you see how well Tonga has gone, is that something that really inspires you guys as well? That you know you've got just as good, you know, just as good talent to draw from as Tonga does. Do you, is it something that you guys really want to, I guess, emulate? Yeah, right now that's probably the mindset yeah. for me right now. Just looking at the talent. Um, that we got across the board and in NRL right now, mm. how many young guns there are yep. that are actually Samoan. So um, for, for me, that's the mindset. Like yep. we can definitely rock it Absolutely. with the big guns, man. Absolutely. Like if Tonga can do it, Samoa can do it 100%, 100%. The talent that is coming out of, like of Samoa and Tonga and PNG and Fiji, yeah. I think it's like 
indigenous and Polynesian players um, make up like 60% now. Yeah, Something it's crazy. crazy. It's a big number. Yeah. It's a massive number. So. Um, and I just think in the future, it's only going to get more yeah. because <coughs> the more Polynesian kids we give equal opportunity to with resources of growing up, mm. they're just going to, you know, they're, they're going to take advantage of that, yeah. which is a good thing. Yep. Um, okay, so, yeah, so you have 13 appearances in 2019. Um, and so did you say 2019 was when you re-signed or was it 2018 that you re-signed? Um, 18, I think 18. it was. Yeah. Okay, two-year yeah, deal? Yeah. Yep. Okay, two-year deal. Mm-hmm. Um, 2020 is the year that like everything seems to click for you. This, it, and it's also the year that you, you, you actually get a, a full opportunity to play in that position, you know. So it's not just, you know, it clicked for you. It was yeah. also you got a chance to yeah. show what you could do. Yeah. So leading into that year, obviously it was a battle with uh, Matty Burton. Was there a conversation with Ivan where Ivan was like, look, there's a chance for you there. If you work hard, you'll get it. And, and you know, how did that all come about? Um, yeah, we sort of sat down before 2020 actually started mm. and just said, um, you pretty much said, are you excited about the role? Um, but I knew, like, I had a mad battle on my hands with Berto. Yeah. Um, yeah, we sort of didn't really speak about that until preseason came around. Yeah. Um, but I always knew that Berto was going to be a mad chance for the spot as well. So yeah. that was definitely motivation for me to, to work hard during that preseason and, and then start the year off well. Um, but yeah, sort of started off a bit slow in 2020. And yeah. then I think about round eight, I think against Tigers was when everything sort of started to click. So yeah, yeah definitely had to have a big, big preseason in 2020. It, um, it takes time to build combinations. And also, you know, I know you'd played with Nath before, but... You still need to be playing regularly in because you hadn't played with him since then, yeah. you know, for a few years. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so 2020 rolls around, and you guys just—it's just crazy. Like the the year that you've had, could you feel that? Like before the year started, were you feeling like we've got something special here, or because it come out of nowhere? Yeah, definitely. We we sort of knew, always knew we had a good group there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think having the coaches like Trent Barrett came through 2020, and yep. he just he done heaps of work with our attack. Yeah, and it just felt easy. Um, everyone knew their role before the mm. season started, and we had a mad preseason as well. So yeah, um, yeah, Baz had a lot to do with how our attacking went and yeah. how our combinations went as well. So Uppy as well, like when he came, he's yeah, massive, massive for our side, and we're a young side. But just to have someone like there who's experienced a lot, yeah, um, and his footy brain, man, so smart. He's he just he knows how to talk to the younger boys as well. So he's, he was a massive inclusion for us yeah. that year. No, for sure. I, I always say like. You can be as good as you want as a half, but if you don't have good service from your hooker, it's yeah. just like, it, like it's it's nearly impossible to get any kind of roll on. He's taking the wrong options. He's not listening to the right calls. Whereas when Appy comes with experience, he knows when you need the ball or yep. when Nathan needs the ball or when to run it. Yep. Um, and so for you personally, when, it, when everything started clicking and you scored seven tries, 23 tries, just, um, did you were you doing anything different that when it started clicking? Do you think were you preparing better, or was it just a matter of getting the games under your belt? My preparation or anything like that wasn't different. Yeah, it was just yeah, probably confidence and, yep. and getting like you said the games under my belt in that six jersey, um, and then just know my role because I knew my role like it was easy for me. Yeah, and to play with Nath and just build games under our belt together mm. um, within the spine that we had and just yeah, I think time was was a, a big thing for me and yep. yeah, yeah, went alright. Mate, it went fucking, fucking all right, Jesus. Um, so, yeah, 2020, uh, you you make the 27-man Origin <coughs> squad too. Was that – do you remember the phone call or anything like that? Because that's just like what a – it's essentially your first full year of first grade, really. Yeah. Like, as in, obviously, you're playing in the first grade squad before, but this is when you're a starter. What, would you remember the phone call coming into the squad? It wasn't even a phone call. Um, oh, really? It was straight after the grand final. Um, oh, wow. When, yeah, we lost and we're standing there and then – um, Hayden Knowles sort of had a word and yeah, Freddie grabbed me and said, you'll be in the squad, I um, want wow. you to come down. And it was pr- that was pretty weird because we just lost the grand final, but someone gives you that news yep. and you don't know how to feel sort of thing. But yeah, it sort of took away a bit of the pain because yep. um, we were in camp the next week and that's when we stayed in there for a month yeah. or so because yeah. it was like back to back to back. So did you stay in there the whole time? Yeah, I was wow. in there the whole how time. Good is that? So. It was a mad experience, man, and yeah. just another confidence booster for myself. For sure. Just to be around those boys and then, yeah, nah, that was a good good way to finish off the year. And so that, that grand final, what what do you remember? Do you remember anything from on the field or anything that, you know, like what's the, a memory that sticks out to you in the grand final? Melbourne? Yeah. Yeah, it was just a blur, man, and I think we just took time away from ourselves. Mm. Yeah, just 
think we're too flat at times as well. Mm. Melbourne rushed you mad as well. Like they got mad. Yeah, um, bloody You know, line speed and that. So, yeah, it was wet wet that night as well. I don't think I expected it to rain either. So, yep. um, that was another factor. But, yeah, everything was just a blur. And then we started doing things mm. uncharacteristically, just trying to push stuff as well. So, yep. yeah, it was, that was a tough game. What's it like, you know, for people listening, what's it like playing a guy like Cam Smith, you know, in the middle there, just making these crazy good decisions? Is, is it... I, do you notice it on the field that he's making these good decisions or is it more of a, a team environment that Storm just bring just such a good game plan? It's sort of like that, like a, a team environment thing. Mm. But you always know um, you can't stuff up with, with a guy like Cam Smith yeah, because he'll make you pay, man. And then mm. it's sort of just watching video after it, how good of a player he is yep. um, and the work he gets through. But he's a freak, man. He's actually up there with the GOAT team. Crazy. You know? <laughs> 400 games. Yeah. Holy moly. When he scored that try, I think it was... I don't know what happened. You deflected yeah, off a million deflected. people. Yeah, yeah. I was just like, yeah, this guy can do it all. Oh, man. <laughs> he was kicking, yeah. kick like Unbelievable. eight goals or something that night. So, yeah. Um, but, you know, you claimed the minor premiership that year as well. Was that something that, you know, the minor premiership means a lot, but was it more the talk of like, look, we've got the minor premiership, but nothing matters unless we win the grand final? Yeah, it was a bit yeah. like that. But yeah. it was a good, good achievement for us. For sure. Um, yeah. And, yeah, everything just felt like it was going a bit... Too easy in a way, like yeah. we we're smashing teams. I think twenty twenty, and then yeah, yeah, maybe we weren't ready for like yep. a side like Melbourne in a big game like that. Because, Mate. Yeah, but Damn. you got it back. You got it back, bro. You got <laughs> it back. Um, okay, so the next year rolls around. Is the preseason any different to the preseason before? As in this this year's preseason, was it? Um, you know, was it? Was there a? Did Ivan make changes that he thought that? The, that would help you take that one step further or was business as usual we know it gets a job done it was a bit shorter the pre-season yeah, okay. it was a lot shorter I think so you wouldn't have much time to get all our stuff in but um, we knew we already had a, a pretty solid foundation from the previous year mm. just added our own things into it and you know, with a guy like Nath he can sort of um, play and, and coach coach things as well so yep. I think he had a lot of a lot of input into what happened that pre-season yep um <coughs> And what's it like now? So, like, you, you won the grand final. You put the, the area has been put on the map. <laughs> what's it like speaking to your mates and that from, you know, when you, you grow up? Yeah, it's crazy. We just had a barbie the, the other night with all my, my day one sort of thing. And, yeah, um, yeah, they just always say, you made it, you made it, you done this and you done that. But, yep. yeah, I wouldn't be here without, you know, any of them or, or my family mm. or my parents. So, um, yeah, just always got to give thanks to the area and, and where I grew up in and all the experiences that I've had. So... Do they um, are they proud? Like to think that like to think that an area like there's ne never been a real a team that has brought this kind of unique uh, vibe to everything. You know yeah. what I mean? Like a, a, an area has been put on the map and it's celebrated and it's you know an area that is often um, disadvantaged, yeah. but it's been celebrated in such a bright you know bright light. Do they often I guess talk about how proud it is that they are on the map? Yeah, always, um, and that's why it's a, a massive motivation for us because. Yeah. Um, as an FTA group, like yeah. a bunch of kids can come down and, and hang out with the boys and, and mm. even train in that. And even that, you know, that's, that's a motivation for us just to do it for those kids and, yep. and give them a role model to look up to because, um, you know, from experience back in, back in the day, it was, it was tough, you know. So mm. um, just knowing that we can sort of do something and do something for them and, and sort of give back as well, that's yep. definitely a motivation for us boys. Do you think, you know, a few of the you boys that are from the area, do you think rugby league has <coughs> really helped you not make you know, bad decisions because of the environment some of you have to deal with. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. It's, it's sort of a way out as yeah. well to sort of express yourself and yeah. get out there and blow off some energy or, or just find some good mates as well that, that are on the same page and want to yeah. make a good name from, for themselves. Um, that's sort of that, that role model look that we wanted to give uh, the kids coming out of the area. For sure. And like also if you've got like a game on the weekend, it sounds simple, but like that at least you keeps you on the straight and narrow. So, okay, well, I'm not going to drink on Friday night because I've got a game on Saturday yeah, or yeah. whatever. Just little things like that. Just gives you a schedule. 100%. Um, gives you training. You, yep. you, something to look forward to as well. Something sure. to be ready for. So, yeah. Um, so, 2021 rolls around. Uh, you know, you guys start the year great again. I, at the start of this year, I was like, fuck, I don't know how, if they'll be able to back that up. Like, I just thought you were so on a high for 2020. I was just like, they're young. And I actually thought it would work more in your favour where – the target wouldn't be on your back as much because you might finish like fourth or fifth. Yeah. But you just fucking did it again. You did it again. Was there was there any feeling of fatigue or anything, or you were just as energetic in this year as you were the year before? Yeah, it was probably more so than the previous year. Yeah, where, okay. Yeah, we lost 
2020 and yep. we didn't get to where we wanted to be so we still got so much to work for and yeah, okay. so much to improve on and, and get better at so yeah. um, that was yeah that was our mind- mindset for the start of the year yep. and yeah there was, there was vibes everywhere so I just wanted to get out there man. So mid-year rolls around and you get selected for Origin what's that feeling like do you remember the phone call with that? Yeah I remember the phone call um, I was in bed and then because I had Freddie's number saved on my phone and then yeah. my missus seen the number and just chucked me my phone and said, answer it, answer it. And then, yeah, Freddie just said, um, keen to come into camp and that. Yeah. And, yeah, it was a pretty quick convo, but um, I told my mum and dad and, bro, yeah. they bored their eyes out badly, man. Yeah. So I know it means it meant so much to them as much as it did to me and, and my yeah. missus. So, yeah, that was, a, that was a mad surreal moment. Far out. And so did he tell you on the phone that you'd be playing six? Nah. No, he didn't tell me um, what position I'd be playing in until mm. we got into, I think it was the first or second night mm. where he, he, he named our positions. Yeah. And then, yeah, when he done that, even like even even more so, I was like, bro, I started getting nervous straight away. I <laughs> yeah, was I was like, like you're oh, oh shit. Holy. <laughs> this is origin. <laughs> yeah, 100%, bro. And just, yep. just looking around the room once again and, and seeing the players that are sitting down next to me, yeah, far out. Yeah. That was crazy, man. And so, you know, the game one rolls around. It's up in Townsville, isn't it? Yep, yeah. And it's like <coughs> record defeat <laughs> for a debut. And you have a fantastic debut. It, what do you remember from the first time, you know, putting on the jersey, you know, everything like that? Yeah, I was probably at the jersey prezzo. Yeah. Um, when our families and that came in and, and gave us our jerseys. Mm. Um, my dad stood up and done a mad speech and he almost cried his eyes out in front yeah, of the yeah. whole team and that. So... That was a mad moment for myself. But yeah, th- um, but yeah, captain's run was, was pretty mad as well. We trained in Townsville, yeah, and then just looking around at the stadium beforehand. Yeah. Yeah, just getting mad nervous, eh? <laughs> and then <laughs> game day, very frick. Uh, Tarek Sims was my roomie. Yeah. And, you know, he'd done it before, so he was, he was pretty chill. But yeah, I think I just I, was, I napped for like two, three hours. Oh, really? Pretending to nap, but I was just lying in the sheets looking at the roof, man. Oh, shit. Because I have a nap game day yeah but i couldn't nap that day i was just yeah looking at the roof for about two hours bro. Far just out. proper two hours just staring at the roof what were you thinking like i don't want to stuff it up or what were you like what was yeah what all that sort of stuff like just the the normal nervousness and yep. um you know a lot of pressure in in that jersey as well so mm. just wanted to play good and, and do my family proud man yeah and so you get to the game. What do you remember from the game? Do you just remember Tommy in that going skits or <laughs> Tommy and uh, Trell just going crazy? In the game? Yeah. Yeah, well, once that whistle kicked off, it was business per normal. Yeah. Um, I think having Biz there as well. And yeah, oh, man, he had such a good game. He's such a good up, game. man. And then having our music beforehand yep. like, and the boys embracing that side of me and Bizza yeah. um, really helped us just play our game as well. So yep. uh, we bonded really well with the boys. And then once we got out there, yeah, it was brothers on um on enemy sort of thing right. so do you remember much from the game at all i remember yeah turbo just having a laugh yeah. i remember turbo um coming around our side and no one even knew i just looked up and he was there yeah um so there was two centers there next to each other <laughs> i was like Frick, give him the ball and it's tom dribovich latrell mitchell bro like, next to each other crazy <laughs> crazy man yeah so that was definitely something um i remembered in game just having turbo just come down whenever he wanted to yeah um, and just give him the ball let him do his thing but yeah, watching Bizza score his first trial was pretty crazy as that well. That was so good, bro. Yeah. So good. Um, and so you, you, on the field, you know, it's a, it's a massive win. What, what's the feeling like for you? Are, you? are you going, mate, I cannot believe my debut was a part of something historic? Yeah. It was a bit like the grand final feeling. Yeah. Can't really tell someone how it feels. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, never would have thought that you'd be part of an origin game for starters. And then yeah. to win by that sort of margin um, in a Queensland territory. Yeah. After a week of like a mad build up, like yep. it's going to be this and it's going to be that. And then just to win by that much was crazy, man. Mate, so. it's wild. Absolutely uh. towered us up. I say us like I played, but. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the team, but Rick, the team, like the guys that we had in our, or we yep. have in our team now, beast, bro. Bro, like like James Tedesco, Latrell Mitchell, Tom Dravojevic, yeah. Josh Adokar, yeah. Bizar, who's having one of the best winger years you've ever seen in his life. Cleary yourself. Um, Mate, it was amazing. It was it was amazing yeah, as a, as a freaks, Queenslander. Um, it's it was one of the best games of footy I've ever seen from a, uh, an Origin side. It was, yeah. it was just crazy. Um, okay, so the, the game finishes, and, and what's that feel like for you and Bizar to have that moment together? 
you know, obviously you're quite you're a religious man, so yep. you just pray together. Yeah. But do you stop and say like, you know, two young fellows that are on the world like the on the center stage of rugby league? Do you mm. ever kind of pinch yourself? Yeah, every every day, man. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of car rides together. Mm. What we did in um with the 2020 and 2021, and yeah. Before we even played Origin, we sort of set our goals. Um, you know, whenever we ride in the car, we just said, um, yeah, we want to make Origin and that. Yeah. And things like that. And just after ticking those boxes um, and then riding in the car afterwards and just looking at him and, and saying we've done it. Yeah. Like things like that. That's just, those are moments right there. Where, 100%. Yeah, you sort of pinch yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's crazy. I'm man. getting pumped for you, bro. I'm <laughs> coming back. I'm coming back. Yeah, Come so. back and like do my hammy in the first session. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Play the nines or something, bro. Oh, no, nah, bro. I get booed. <laughs> <laughs> Run out, get, <laughs> get booed, bro. <laughs> this bum doing? He plays fucking 50 in a row games. He's nobody. Um, what's, what's the playlist like in a, in a, in a drive with Bizza yeah. and yourself? <laughs> what's the, like, the playlist would be, it'd be different. Let's just put it that way. It's different as, bro. People think it's just straight drill, but no, no it's way. totally wrong, man. It's got, got to be some kind of K pop or something. It's some proper shit. wrong. K pop is, is massive on our playlist. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that's why. Um, me and Biz, I know a few. Yep. <laughs> Three who's, or four. Who's, who's your go-to K-pop? Like chicks, bro. There's the chicks, chick like songs. Black Pink and shit. Yeah, yeah. Pink, A Pink, um, Mr. Chu, bro. That's our, that's our go-to um, <laughs> K-pop um, tra um, track. Is there another one like Twice? They named Twice. Some K-pop group called Twice. I don't know, but we don't really know the bands. We just know the songs. The songs and, and that. If, if there's a vibe, bro, we'll, we'll play it on repeat for like three days until right. we know the song. <laughs> I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> K-pop is catchy. Bro, it's freaking bomb, man. I don't um, really care if, if people I, I went to a K-pop. You know? I went to a K-pop uh, concert. Concert. Actual? Blackpink. Oh, yeah? 100%. Any went with good? The missus. It was awesome. That's on a bucket. That's on my bucket Bro, list anyway. Bro, it was anyway. hectic. Like, because yeah. um, like, I'm the kind of, I like to experience different shit. Yeah, you know? mad. So I don't, like, I don't listen to K-pop like every day or anything, but I know what it is. Um, anyway, we went to the, went to the Blackpink and, um, I actually had one of the most patriotic, proud moments I've ever had in my life. <laughs> Let me explain. Let me explain. So, like, the whole crowd was Asian. Yeah. And my, my missus is Asian or whatever. <laughs> anyway, like, it gets to a period, like, where, you know, they're singing, like, they're singing, right, and they stop. And the whole crowd starts chanting, Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi. And I was like... What was that? Like, they just did. <laughs> oh, yeah? But they're all, they all looked Asian. Yeah. But I was, like, so proud that, you know, often you wouldn't expect someone that has different heritage to be so proud from here yeah and i just thought it was a really good representation of how multicultural this country really is yeah. like was it in australia it was in australia oh, man, man. 100 they just started chanting it i was and i said to my missus i was like i'm so fucking proud right yeah, now like that's hectic that, and i just couldn't believe that you wouldn't ex you like you expect a pub with a bunch of white blokes to be like yeah, it was good. but yeah. it really wasn't like that it was it was a totally different demographic um and i just yeah i felt felt really really proud and and also the actual so i've been to blackpink sean mendez uh, Khaled, um, who else? Post Malone, um, Blackpink. They're like choreography and the the lighting and shit is yeah. wild. It's like a full experience. Um, Khaled actually wasn't that good. And I oh, was, wasn't he? I was disappointed because <laughs> he's one of his songs that like released a couple of years ago. Is he's got mad tracks, bro. He's got mad tracks. Yeah. One of his songs is like me and my missus. That's me and my missus' song. Yeah. That's our song. Yeah. And we didn't enjoy his, him live. Oh, so that's crazy. Like tinged it a bit. Yeah, that's the worst day. Uh, oh, I think Bruno bro. Mars has gone at that. Oh, like, really? Yeah. Well, I haven't been to one, but I've seen yeah. mad videos where he sounds exactly the same. Oh, yeah, he's he done. 100%. So Khaled sounds the to. same, but it's like the energy is low. He's, oh, still, okay. he's still learning his craft. He's yeah. not like... Whereas I went to Sean Mendes and he is a star. <laughs> yeah. like he's a gun. Plays. You've got have good gun. energy in that, eh? Hundred yeah. percent. And that's it. Like, and that was the problem with Khaled. He was kind of like, very like chill or something. Chill. Yeah. And it'd be good if you were around a camp campfire having a few drinks with the boys. It would be hectic, down, yeah. like very personal. Yeah. But with a crowd, like even other people are like, it's kind of boring. Like, yeah. um, which sucks. I'm a huge fan. But Sean Mendes is like the pro. Like mm. everything is to a T. Like. It's yeah, he's a gun. But yeah, Black Pink was actually really good. Post Malone was really good. Yeah, I don't really like his new music that much. His older beer bongs of Bentley stuff, I really do like. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's K-pop concert, eh? K-pop concert story. Bucket list now, mate. It, it's good. Yeah. Trust me, it's a good experience. It's, yeah. It was a really good experience because they're so uh, talented and like everything is 
like the choreographing is perfect the yeah. dance moves are per- everything is put together perfectly whereas as you know like some concerts you go to and it's like oh what song am i singing and like it's just not as professional yeah they're gone they're gone anyway mad, mad, mad. so if we're talking track track list we're talking are we talking 50 percent k-pop 20 percent mm. drill mm. and then what 30 percent just whatever probably 30 percent drill yeah 15 percent k-pop and then you know stuff like Vangle Boys, yeah, stuff that gets you dancing, sort of thing. Just quality pop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice pop. There's nothing like people that hate on pop. It's like it makes the world go around. Pop. Yeah. Everyone likes a good pop song. They just yeah. don't want to admit it. Hundred percent. Because it's literally designed to be liked. Um, which one had a? Are you are you mates with the one four boys in the sense of like obviously you grew up in the same area? Mm. Which one's the biggest footy fan? Out of the boys? Yeah, they all are. Eh? Oh really? Um, I'm pretty sure some of them have even played. I'm not too sure. Yeah. I'll have to ask them. Yeah. But yeah, they, they're a big fan I'll of I'll give them a call. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> no, they love their footy, man. So they love the area as well. Um, I think it's good to see like the marrying of, you know, they're really like ultra successful in the area, but they're still, they're also still remember like, you know, you boys are representing them on a footy field. Yeah. I think that's just, that's um, so good. So good. Anyway, 2020 rolls around. 21. You win that first game, then you play game two, but then you get injured for game three. Yep. So game two, um, you win the series. Mm. What's that like lifting the Origin trophy? Yeah, oh, I didn't even touch it because there was that game three. They got yep. to touch the shield. Oh, well, that's they didn't where they get presented. Okay, so yeah, yeah. Okay. I, haven't got, I haven't even got the chance to touch it. That yet. sucks. Yeah, so yeah, <laughs> Damn. You did all the hard work and you don't even get to bloody touch it. <laughs> What's the feeling like then? You know, you, you you finish the game. You've won an Origin series by a record margin, actually. Yeah. You know, speaking of Nate, speaking of Bizza and that. What's it like? Yeah, it's crazy, man. And then yeah, pretty much straight after that. Um, yeah, the ring was probably our next goal. So yeah, um, but that was a mad moment. Like when we got back home and we had that car parade yeah. back on my house. But yeah, talking with the boys, it was pretty much a, a look at you, look at each other and, and saying, you know, we done it. Yeah, sort of tick those boxes off mm. for the goals that we had set this year. Yeah, um, and then being in the in the squad, not in, not getting to play the previous year. Yeah, um, yeah, it was massive for me. And so after Origin, do you feel like? It seemed like it took you a bit to get that energy back into your game again. Do you yeah. feel that was the case or what was it like? A little bit. I think Nathan was out as well. Yeah. So, Because um, you had to become the, the yeah. seven pretty much and, you know, that's you're more a six really. Yeah. Yeah, that was very different for me. Yeah. Um, and then learning that role, I sort of got into that vibe where um, pass the ball um, and get to our points and started to play really structured. Yeah. And that was something um, I had to get back into my game, just playing that free flow yep. style that... Um, I like to play and mm. um, what I'm built to play for, you know. So yeah. that was something, um, probably a dip in my year mm. um, when most of the boys are out and I sort of had to um, take control sort of yeah. thing. But yep. yeah, struggled but learned a lot um, in that period when the boys were out. It's much harder than people like people. Oh, yeah, just go seven and lead a team around. Like there's a reason why there are structured halves and there's a yeah. reason why there's ball running halves and, you know, just, <coughs> you know, attacking halves. They're very different roles. Mm. Like people, I think some people confuse them because you both get called halves. Yeah. But they're so different. Yeah, like it's they're different. so different. Yeah. But Berto was killing it like when he was in the six yep. as well. So, yeah, lucky I had that guy there yeah. carrying me, man. Fuck, he was so good in the centres, eh? <laughs> yeah, he was a freak, bro. Um, and so a freak. Where do you reckon, where do you reckon Critter's best position is? Obviously, Dylan Edwards, gun fullback, but I reckon Critter's a gun fullback. Yeah, I don't even know. He's like, good everywhere. He's probably that guy that can yeah. play anywhere. Mm. Um, like even on the wing, him being in the, on the wing in the GF, yep. probably one of us the game. 100%, um, good point. So to speak. But yeah, he's, he's a good fullback. Don't get me wrong, man. But He's yeah. good everywhere. And he made he probably made like three plays that like you probably don't even make the grand final if he doesn't make those. I think it was a try saver. I think against, was it maybe the Eels or whatever? It was an intercept again. Yeah, that one where he went like yeah, that. Yeah, bro, that bro. was crazy. Bro. Crazy. Yeah, I've been playing basketball with him too like these past couple of yeah. days. So that's probably where he gets that from. Oh, man. He's built different. That he kid, is man. a gun, a gun. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, wh- when did you, wh- like, did Ivan kind of speak to you and be like, look, just go back to doing what you're doing? Is yeah. It, did you have a chat or anything? Yeah, it was a chat, like a few chats actually. Like, yeah. we sort of had that chat and then, yeah, sort of didn't work again. <laughs> yeah. So I was just sort of stuck in that um, that sort of feel or vibe, so to speak. But, um, yeah, it was definitely hard to get out of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, once Nathan came back, it was sort of all went back to normal for <laughs> yeah, me straight away. So. Thanks, Nathan. You're back, yeah. guys. Yeah, I was uh, so happy when, he got, when we got the news that he was coming back this year. Yeah. There was sort of um, rumours about him not making it back. Hey, what is it? What is, what a, is a risky but good decision yeah. to, get, to not get the operation? Yeah. Because, like, 
as you know, you, you get so many small chances to win premierships. And, windows and, that, so yeah. and then he got it done. Um, well, he's got it done, sorry. So he comes back and then leading into the grand final, um, you guys find your form, but you also have some really, really tough, like tough, tough. Uh, you, well, you lost the Rabbitohs that first round. Mm. Was that, were you starting to go, oh, shit? Or did you just know that if you just get everything right, you can get the job done? Yeah, we sort of knew straight away we didn't play well. And yeah. I think we got into a huddle after the game and said, well, you know, effort, we've got to do it the hard way. But, mm. you know, that's all right because yep. um, we like the hard way. Yeah. So, yeah. And so the next week you play, fuck. It was Para. Para. Yeah. And that's another really, really close game. That was a hard game, man. Oh, that, that was a battle. <laughs> that was yeah. a battle, bro. Yeah. So what was, do you remember much from that game? Yeah, I do. Um, that was probably the game where you know the coaches were into me just saying run the ball. Yep. Um, had a few good runs as well, so mm. that got me into the game straight away. But yep. um, yeah, I remember that second half was frigging so so tiring, and all the boys were fatigued. And yep. Parra played well as well, so mm. it was just that grinding game the whole way. So um, yeah, until the critter made that big play, and, and I think it was Junes that dropped that ball. Yeah. Um, until that point. That was a tough game. That was wild, wild. Anyway, um, so yeah, so you win the grand final. And celebrations in that, I mean, I personally didn't think was, there was controversy out of it all. But like with the, the social media posting and people, you know, some people saying you shouldn't post, you should post. What, what, was it just like, you know, with the trophy and everything, was it just innocent? You're just enjoying yourself? It's not like you intend these things to happen. What, what was that like for you guys? Yeah, it was a bit... Weird, because you know you're so, on, so much on a high, and then you're getting all these reports that they're saying you're doing the wrong thing. Mm. And it's all just enjoyment and, and celebrating each other and, and yep. our successes. So mm. there's no nothing like that. Yeah, you know, disrespectful. Um, you know, even towards the trophy or yeah. or the NRL or anything like that. Because yeah. if you know our boys and our team, um, they will respect you, um, even if they don't know you, sort of thing. So yeah, hundred percent. It's definitely something we didn't intend to do or or no. give us that give ourselves that. You know that image that has been painted about us it's yeah it's a bit weird eh? like it was speaking i think it was speaking before about how like last year you know you were embraced and loved and then this year it was almost like they were looking for reasons to not like you looking for reasons to the things they loved about you last year all of a sudden they don't love you was that i guess tough to deal with as a young squad going hang on a sec we're not really doing anything wrong like we're celebrating tries and we're yeah. just loving we're just trying to enjoy footy yeah it was weird at a point and then yeah we just didn't care Mm. Um, after a certain time yep. about what people were saying especially in the media and, and things like that I think play, being an NRL player um, and nowadays you have to learn to block that stuff out man, 100% because, yeah you get some crazy stuff online so yep. um, just understanding that within our four walls is what matters most and um, choosing the opinions that, that can sort of take out of sort of helped us as a young team and we got leaders up there like Fish and yep. Claire's and Yoey that sort of um, help us yep. or help the younger boys through that period. And so this year you extended this year, your contract? Uh, or last year? It was last year. Last year. Yeah, after 2020. Um, you know, were there other offers from other places? Did you consider it or not really? You were, you were pretty... Yeah, not really. Yeah. As soon as they sort of offered, just um, wanted to stay there. Yeah. Because um, I know the boys and, and they feel the same way as I do. Uh, we can do some special things with this, with this team. Yep. Um, yeah, winning a premiership now is I'm just really happy and grateful I made that decision. Mate, thank you. could you imagine if you left and they went nah, the Oh my yeah, I can't even I can't even can't even imagine myself in another jersey, man, to be yeah, honest. So yeah. um Okay, ask all the boys. Actually <coughs> it, it is the goal I mean obviously the goal is win a premiership again, but for you personally, you know, are you hoping to take your game I mean there's not another level to get to, but like is it now a point of keeping that New South Wales jersey and trying to you know go again is that the internal of it's kind of like you're in a period of your career where you can you've played some of the best footy any six has played in the comp right now you're one of the best sixes in the comp but now it's about doing it every single year is that what you're internally saying to yourself um i think i've got like so much room to get better yeah like especially in that time where i didn't play well without yeah. the boys um then like looking at myself in the mirror mm. just um yeah gave me so much more reason to get better yeah because i've got, I got a long way to go um, yeah. yeah, I'm 24, so um, God willing, you know, I can play a lot more years in NRL, yeah. but yeah, I've got a long way to go yep. um, personally. For sure. Now ask all the boys this favourite, I mean, you're probably going to say, I already know your answer, but favourite rapper of all time? Rapper? Yeah. 
Four time, one four, bro. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah, they're the boys, but like, the amount okay, of times you've one four. Yeah, rapper. I'm not really a rapper kind of guy, man. Like, I'm really? like an R and B. Um, okay, R and B. Slow James, lover, lover, lover boy. <laughs> um, <laughs> Favorite artist of all time. Usher, Usher, Usher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a, I've got a hot take. I got a hot take. Look, I'm a huge <laughs> fan of Usher. I think 8701 is one of the best albums you could ever listen to. Yeah. But I personally think that Craig, ba Craig David is better than Yeah, Usher. he's up there too. He's up there. Craig David, for me, is the GOAT <laughs> R&B artist. Yeah, nah, he's cool. He's yeah. all right. He's got Matt here. Matt, he's here. <laughs> <laughs> that Born to Do It CD is the greatest CD of all time, in my opinion. Yeah. Greatest CD of all time, period. Favorite movie of all time? Movie. Far out. I don't even know why I have to think about this. Harry Potter's luck up there for oh, me. Oh, bruh. They're pretty gangster. When I like when I, what I try to do with the missus and that, is like you have a break of like a year or two years, and then you do a Harry Potter marathon. And it feels new still, you and know. And it feels new, and it's <laughs> the best thing ever. And it's and it, and then when it finishes, you feel like there's a. It feels like a breakup. Yeah. It's like there's a hole in your life. Yeah. That like every night, that's what you would look forward to. Yeah. Want to watch Harry Potter with the missus? We're gonna enjoy it. But then when that goes, you're like, fuck. What's what's the point of living, man? I got nothing to look forward. To. I got nothing to look forward to anymore. Yeah. Besides um, that, probably um. Boys to the hood is boys in the hood. Boys in the hood. Well. Yeah, that's pretty mad. That is very mad. Yeah, very mad. Did you like the straight out of Compton? It was alright. Yeah, it was right. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Yeah, but I just feel like yeah, I liked um, Boys in the Hood. Have you seen Menace to Society? Mm, yeah, I probably have. But yeah, I don't it's, remember, it's a bit like it? Boys in the Hood, but yeah, for some reason I like the the older sort of gangster ones. Yeah, like when they first came out. Okay. Back then. Um, now, if everything happens perfectly in the next twelve months, where are you and what are you doing? From from today. Yep. Uh, man, in my own house with another ring on. Yeah, with my two kids, um, having some red wine. Red wine? You're a red wine man. <laughs> not, not even a red wine drinker, but who knows? <laughs> who knows? Maybe in a year's time. <laughs> this sounds. It sounds it like sounds successful mad. and yeah. like <laughs> posh. Yeah, hundred nice. percent. It sounds it sounds mad. It sounds good. The only time I started drinking wine is when I met my missus now. And I was like, yeah, I drink wine. And I was yeah. like, I fucking hate wine. <laughs> but I just drank that shit because I was like, obviously. I had a, ro a red wine um, with Tupes, Daniel Tupo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it was in the Origin came that I didn't play. Yeah. That was my first red wine that I had. Yeah. I was gone after it, bro. So. Oh, did you try, like smash it? Yeah. He like said, skull it. Like, skull. <laughs> we all messed up, but yeah. he said, skull it. And yeah, went to bed after that. <laughs> oh, because yeah, it sends you to sleep, bro. Yeah. Far that wasn't out. it. <laughs> bro, I say it all the time. Tupu, one of the most underrated wingers of all time. He's a beast, bro. He's a beast. He's and a he's gun. been a beast for fuck, for underrated, ages. Underrated, yeah. Just, ages. Yeah, he's Goes gun, about bro. his business, yeah. but he does it so well. Humble as to, like, Hunt. yeah. I He's seen him man. out at uh, a few years ago at um, fuck, Ivy Bar. Oh, okay. Legend. Yeah. Absolute legend. I mean, yeah. I was so drunk when I saw him too. <laughs> we just come from Eminem Festival. Oh, yeah. Eminem yeah, concert, sorry. Uh, but anyway, legend. All right, mate. Thank you so, so much for coming on. Um, you've got a Twitch and everything? People yeah, listening? Yeah. What's yeah. A Twitch? Uh, Romy27. Romy27. Yeah, that's the one. If you want to go and watch <laughs> a very new player, <laughs> just learn the basics about what it is to be a content player, go and watch Jerome Lua. Shit, my phone. Oh, shit. We've actually got in the room, Romy's mate, he's going to the world titles for FIFA. Nah, he's trash. He's uh, trash, Marco, you reckon? Marco, search him up. Marco, search him up. Have you got a highlight reel or what, Marco? Nah, no, only Romy's up. Uh, <laughs> he's actually a gun, but no he's actually going. He's, he's literally going to the World Cup FIFA. In January, yeah. In January. He's off to, he's off to England. Um, shit. Chuck me in your suitcase, please, but no, nah, all the best to my guy. So follow follow the Twitch um, the Twitch channel, but uh, mate, thank you so much for coming on, and good luck for the new year. Or oh, love, brother. Thank you oh. for having me. Let's go.